easiest way to um, kind of try to fill these holes is just a command called fill mesh hole, um, <clears throat> which, yeah, it's, it's just incredibly intuitive. Usually anything that you can think of, um, if there's not a command for it, it's because it's, you're just not using the right words somehow. But, um, so it'll, I've typed fill mesh hole, and it says select mesh edge on hole boundary. Um, and so I can, for example, click, um, let's say this is a hole, so we just click a mesh edge on this boundary. And it stitched something together. So it kind of filled in that. Um, but we can repeat that command. If you just hit spacebar or right click, it'll repeat the former command. See if we can keep. But that command, there's no way that that command is going to work with all of this stuff, because this is just information that I want to get rid of. Um, and actually, um, so just like with, with um, NURBS in Rhino, you can turn on control points um, for meshes. And I think that's probably the easiest way. I mean, if we wanted to just use the, the typical command um, to delete these mesh faces, what do you think that command would be called? Delete mesh um, and so then we can, you know, select mesh faces to delete, um, and that's fine. Uh, so you're just, you're just holding down shift and selecting? I'm actually not holding down shift. It's letting me select all the faces that I want first, and then I press enter to let it know that I'm done. Um, I can hold control and deselect ones that I don't want. Um, So when I make this crossing window from left to right, it'll only um, select objects that are completely within the window, like that. Whereas if I go from right to left, it'll select everything that it crosses. Yeah. What was the? How did you deselect? Hold control and click. So wait, what was the window? If you go from left to right or right to left. So if you go from right to left, everything you touch is going to get included in the selection. If you go from left to right, it's only objects that are completely um, within that selection window. How do you do this? Um, okay, so I, I'm using the command delete mesh face. So you just type, yeah, delete. And then, huh? Okay, let me. Okay, if uh, if you're getting a an error message like. Um, it wasn't able to delete any mesh spaces. Um, there's a, a weird formatting distinction between um, a polygon mesh and and a mesh. If you just select it and you type explode, it says then exploded a polygon mesh into 258 meshes. Um, the polygon mesh just means it it was imported as um, as a polygon mesh, which could include multiple disconnected meshes. Um, so for example, if I hide that, okay, so then I have all this other stuff that wasn't really a part of that mesh. Um, now I can delete the mesh faces. Where's select this stuff? Yeah, so wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, just explode. You can explode almost anything. 
you know, well. <laughs> converts the... It converts the polygon mesh to a collection of individual meshes. Um, so if you if you had imported a file as um, yeah, I mean, so basically this was scanned at, not as one single object, but it's kind of multiple objects stitched together. It's it's actually not a really important point. Um, when I kind of I'm going to delete everything except for this one mesh. So, yeah, for some reason, like, um, these triangles here weren't really included as a part of the of the scan, and I have no idea what that is, just, just something with the uh, scanning algorithm. If we delete, if we delete them, then they're not really there. Um, we can try to select everything and type join, join it together. So now 203 meshes were joined into one. And we should still be able to um, delete these mesh faces. You might, for instance, explode and then join yeah. in order to clean out the mesh. Yeah, you might, you might uh, find that to be helpful. I mean, actually, it's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty common thing I end up having to do. Oh, okay, we need to explode it again. What does join mean? Um, it converts it back into the polygon mesh, um, polygon mesh. format, um, which just means that it's um, it's more than one mesh. It's a, it's a bunch of um, meshes acting together. Why is it you to grab all the Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, what I hope is that nobody actually has to spend a whole lot of time doing this kind of stuff because we do have like the feature where it automatically solidifies it um, using that uh, the sense. Um, the the sense scanner, so that's why like um, these these are all perfectly cleaned already. Um, these these faces, um, and yeah, it's just pretty tedious um, having to do all this. There's a, a couple of shortcuts. Um, Uh, and just like other things we should know about meshes is um, joining is not equal to welding. Um, when you weld vertices, um, we can actually talk about that in a minute. Um, we can just type uh, weld and give it an angle tolerance. We can just say 180 degrees, and it's going to um, first join everything. And welding, okay. So, so there's so there's kind of two there's two ways to do the join. <clears throat> One is select everything with the select tool and then type join in the command and it joins what you've selected. Mm -hmm. Or if you type join, then it's like, oh, you've got to click on individual ones. You can't actually drag and select the whole thing. So uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, well, welding, so here here we have like this little piece and, and here uh, the bigger piece are joined, but they're not welded, um, which, which makes for a kind of a bad connection. Um, when Vertices are welded. It 
it basically smooths the uh, the normals. Um, if we just so if you look at kind of how this is making a sharp edge right there, if we type weld, um, see how it, it kind of smoothed that. Um, that will really help later on when we kind of subdivide. So uh, that welds your whole logic? Or just, yeah. Did you have some pieces? Okay. Yeah, everything that was joined and um, so that's I mean that's a useful thing to do when you have everything joined together and you have a more or less closed volume. I'm gonna see if I can do a better job really quick of um, filling the mesh holes. Okay. So there I just clicked right there and it kind of filled in just about everything. How did you do that? Um, that was just fill mesh hole again. Yeah. Um, so it it is pretty significant actually where on the mesh you click. Um, how it is going to determine how to fill that hole. So that, I mean, basically this just worked a whole lot better than um, than it did 10 minutes ago because first I cleaned up some of the rough edges um, and also it seems that by clicking here it worked a lot better. Um, this is now still pretty messy. There's uh, a lot of these overhangs and, and whatnot. Um, I can go in and um, try to clean those up. Um, another thing, another way you can do it is by turning the points on, just by typing P on or points on. And you can select the individual points and delete those. Um, and that might come in handy if, if you end up with something like this and you just want to kind of drag um, points over to overlap certain places or manipulate the mesh on a more detailed scale. But um, I'm just going to leave it as it is and um, here we can try to fill this mesh hole too and see if, if we can just get away with kind of printing something like this. I'm not really sure we can, but we can try. So, kind of close. Um, one thing we could do if we wanted to make sure that we have a back here is uh, explicitly add in one mesh face between here and here. So, like, just make one little um, rectangle. So, um, Three D face, um, so it's just going to add a polygon. I can just do it from these four vertices. Then I need to join and weld this. So now this is a part of my mesh. Now if I do um, fill mesh hole. it will um, preserve that input. So pretty sloppy, but I'm, if, if I'm just trying to, as quickly as I can, just cap this in a way that it can 3D print. Um, so it's also useful to go back and forth between viewports or, or render modes, so just to see what this is going to look like. It's not a hole. What's what's happening is um, the mesh normals are flipped at this point, um, and that's what the kind of grayscale is showing you. Um, we can try to fix this uh, with a command called unify mesh normals, which then makes sure all the adjacent it's as much as possible that adjacent meshes. Um, have similar facing normals. Um, yeah, basically that. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so it's now I'm in better shape. Um, I mean, we should be able to put this into Cura and get basically this out. Um, is, is the bottom flat enough? Will, will it be able to sit, sit on a plate and, and get the first layer successful? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't think that would be a problem. Um, because it's, um, there's some variation here, but um, it will probably print the first layer uh, as, you know, not completely full, but um, then when it steps up, I mean, nothing here is more than 45 degrees or even close, right? Um, to, so 45 degrees being like the angle of uh, tolerance that it could build, um, this, you know, cantilevers at 45 degrees. Um, I think it would actually be no problem to, to kind of realize something like this. So, so how do I... How do I fill in, like, a hole? Um, try just fill a mesh hole. So, okay. You might have to make a bridge. Or right, you might want to make a bridge or two. Um, if you... Uh, let's see. And then another fun visualization tool is uh, EMAP. just gives you a uh, highly reflective, you kind of see where all the seams are. So I don't think there's any need to re-export this to um, Cura. We can just assume that it'll, it'll work more or less, um, although it won't be perfectly clean. Um, But uh, yeah, let's just stop there with this and then go go to uh, model creation. Um, and then what was I going to say about um, these guys? It was something we already did just to, um, if you wanted to got him like that, it's, it's just the, the uh, mesh split and then fill mesh hole if you wanted to, to kind of cut them in a, a flat orientation so that it would print better. Okay, so let's just wrap that up and move on.